So I'm finishing off my bourbon project. So I end up here with about 17, a uh, little over 17 liters of, uh, of alcohol, or liquor you could say, from my stripping run. So uh, my yield for this was, uh, if you remember, I, used, I started out with 25 kilos, so that's about 55 pounds of cracked corn, then uh, 10 kilo of rye, so that was about 22 pounds of rye, and then 15 pounds of malted barley. And I did about eight run. I did eight runs, about 18 liters per run. And so this is what I ended up with. So now I'm going to load this into the still. But first of all, I have to modify my still to make it into a reflux still. So let's do that right now. So if you remember, this is the um, this is the column and the condenser, one piece off of uh, my still. So in order to turn this into a reflux still, I'm going to have to pack the column with something and you notice I have this coil here, this soft copper coil. That's additional cooling, I can explain that in a minute. But right now we'll, we'll get, well, I'm gonna pack this with copper. So right over here I have my copper. I bought three feet of copper, copper, uh, I don't know what you call that. It's like a scrubbing pad, but it's made of copper. So I coil that up and put that inside the tube. I'll show you how I do that. So what I'm doing here is I just uh, just roll this, not too tightly, roll it up. Uh, about a one foot length of this rolls up just the right size to fit inside this two inch column. Put that in there. Put in a second one. I reuse these over and over. I wash them out real good when I'm done with uh, with a uh, what they call a spirit run. So I got that one done, shove that in there. The third one, this one's just a little bit longer. It's about 13, 14 inches longer. The other ones are about 12 inches, so this is about 13 or 14 inches. A little bit tighter fit, so because we don't want this to fall back down into the still, which I haven't experienced. It, it works pretty good. And then when I've done to remove it, I just use a set of tongs out of the kitchen drawer. So that's in there. So the idea behind that is that makes it into a reflux still. So a reflux is when you're forcing uh, some of the heavier components of your the vapors back down. They condense against all this copper and they run back down into the still. So you have a more a, a purer, uh, higher alcohol product coming out of the top of the still. And it works really good. So I've got my pot on the stove. And I filled it up with the uh, liquor that I got from my stripping runs, and it's pretty full. It looks like about 18 liters of uh, liquor I get out of that. So now I'm going to, first of all, just verify the alcohol content of that. It'll give me an idea of what my yield is going to be during my spirit run. So I put a sample of, uh, of the liquor from my stripping runs into the sample tube here, and. Uh, See, I'm running right around 22%. I have the still loaded up with about 18 liters of liquor from my stripping run, and uh, I've converted the column into a reflux uh, reflux column. So I remember I packed that two-inch column with uh, the copper mesh, and then uh, what I've got here is a, an additional cooling coil right at the, at the head of my column just below the temperature gauge there. So what happens here is I run my cooling line up to the bottom of my condenser, it goes up the condenser and uh, out of the top of the condenser and instead of running back to the drain, now it runs over to this coil, this cooling coil at the, on the head of the of my condenser, of the, uh, of the still I should say, and then back to the drain. So that, uh, that creates a reflux still forcing you know, the, the fusel oils, the fusel alcohols, whatever you call them, back down into the still so you get a, a more a purer distillate, better tasting and also a higher proof alcohol too, so that's good. So now we'll just wait for this thing to heat up and see what kind of production we get. So it's been about two hours and now my still has just started running. I get a really good production out of that. And uh, just take you up. I'm right around 78 degrees, which is pretty perfect. So 
This is my fourth sample and I'm consistently running at about 80% alcohol by volume. So this is my last uh, my last cut you could say, my last bit that I'm going to take from this spirit run. It's right around 60% alcohol. That's as low as you want to go. After that it just starts tasting not too bad. I'll keep drawing the alcohol though out of the still. It will still keep running for a while and uh, I'll collect everything I can out of it. And these are considered tails and I'll use those on my next batch. Next time I make whiskey I'll just throw them right in the still along with the the uh, the rest of a stripping run and that way I don't waste any of that, any of that alcohol. So I've been running this still now for probably about four or five hours. I see our temperature is getting up around 82 degrees so that's pretty much it for the spirit run. We still have plenty of alcohol coming out as we'll see here but it's uh, getting to be a fairly low percentage and it'll have a lot of the fusel oils in it and it will taste that good and as a matter of fact just to verify we've got the uh, got our alcometer here and where are we at I think there are points where I wanted to so if we look at that it's about 55 percent so I basically stopped at about 60 percent alcohol after that you don't really want to keep that stuff so this is the yield that I got out of my spirit run remember the 18 liters of uh, of my bourbon stripping run so I got eight jars one of them is only half full so that's one two three almost four liters and I'm gonna check the average alcohol and it's probably running about 75 percent and then we'll uh, so I'll just mix that all together and see what my average is So I poured all of my liquor from the spirit run into a nice clean stainless steel pot, mix it up just to see what my average is. And so I have it there in my test tube and uh, looks like 74%, almost 75%. So that was the result. So now what I have to do is dilute that down to 60%, 60, between 60 and 65%, and then uh, age it. So let's uh, move on to that next process. So I've determined that, I got a, a, bit, a few notes here, determined that I have 3.75 liters of uh, white dog, you could say, whiskey. Not quite whiskey yet until we age it. 3.75 liters at 74%. So if I multiply 3.75 times 0.74, I end up with 2.77. So there's of pure alcohol, there's 2.77 liters in this container. Now I wanted to bring this average from 74% up to about 62% for the purpose of aging. So uh, I divide 2.77 by 0.62 and I end up with 4.47. Subtract that from my, that's my total volume. I need a total volume of 4.47 uh, with that amount of alcohol in there. In order for that to be at 62%. So I'm going to add 0.72 liters of water and it's going to be distilled water. Just hang on a sec. So I measured out here in my measuring cup 0.72 liters of distilled water and I hope my pot's big enough to hold all this volume. Yeah, we're good. Okay, so if I were to test this once more, it should come out at 0.62 alcohol by volume, so I'm going to do that right now. Just mix this a little bit, make sure it's stirred in. right around 64 percent so I'm gonna leave it at that now we have to uh, 
age this. We'll go on to that next. In the meantime, I've been running this still, and we're running at about, uh, uh, it's getting close to 90 degrees, high 80s. Just pulling all the alcohol out of this batch, and look at that, we've already got three quarters of a jar right there. So that's about uh, 350 liters, or milliliters, I should say. I'll just keep running this until there's not much left. So here, I've bottled a figurehead 4.5 almost liters of, of, uh, of our whiskey here at 60, actually it turned out to be 64%. So in order to age them, I picked out a 3 liter bottle and then two 750s that have sitting around some old whiskey bottles. So that adds up to about 400, 450, so it's a little shy here, but now you'll, you'll observe in these two, I've already put the charred white oak in there, with this one and on that one. And uh, so I just buy a slab of white oak from a local supplier, slice it into fairly small, uh, fairly thin strips so that uh, I would say that's probably a quarter inch by half inch, so that they can, uh, I can get them in and out of the bottle easy enough. So I just put those in there. I'll put... There's one, two, three, four, five, six, I'll put seven in there. So I've got seven in there, and I, I'll hide this one away. And these two, I'll try to hide them away, but I'll end up sampling them from time to time. I got these two bottles out just to show you what happens. This here is a two-row malt that I did. I bottled this November the 20th. This is at 70%. I put the oak strips in there and you can just see how dark that is it's beautiful and it's really taken on some nice flavors and that's just since November so I have a few bottles of this sitting around and I'm going to see how long I can leave that weight and this one is only since January this is rum though this is at 75% so it actually picked up the colors out of the out of the oak quite a bit faster you have to make sure you use white oak don't use red oak now what you have to do is label them. So what I label on there is I'll put on what it is, the grain bill, uh, the date, how many times I distilled it, and the percentage of alcohol. So that's it. You're pretty much done. Incidentally, I'm still running the still. I'm pulling off, I uh, just pulled off a half a liter at 50%. Still lots of alcohol in that stripping run. And so I'll just keep running that, and then I'll use what I've accumulated in my next batch. There's my label. I don't know if you can read that. It says bourbon. And the grain bill, 60% corn, 15% rye, 15% barley, 64% alcohol, and the date, April 10th, 2020. So the other, the other uh, beverages I've made, the, the uh, single malt and the rum, I, I aged them at 70 and 75%, and I think maybe it's a bit too strong. It pulls maybe too much of the flavor out of the wood. I'm not 100% sure, but I know with bourbon, they want you to uh, put it in the barrel and age it at between 60 and 65%. So I got it at 64. So it might take a little longer to pull out the color to get that nice amber color. I don't know. But anyway, uh, there we go. So I got my 4.5 liters of bourbon at 64% was the total yield I got from that batch. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or if you want to know more, just put it in your comments down below. Thanks. Okay, so this is the end of my virgin bourbon project and uh, yesterday I bottled off what I, uh, what I had taken from my spirit run. I ended up with 4.5 liters and I just thought I'd show you how, uh, how this uh, this bourbon here, it's at 64% and it's already taking on um, the color even after less than one day from that oak that I put in there. After I finished the collecting the alcohol uh, up to about 60, down to 60%, then I, I kept the still running and I ended up with almost two liters of what I call tails. So the average alcohol of that two liters is 40% so I'll just kind of set that aside next time I do uh, whiskey I can throw that in with my spirit run 
and recover uh, some of the alcohol out of that. But it's not really drinkable, so I'm just going to leave that off to the side. I'll label it. So there.